I, I actually, I, I, I used to be a corporate whore, but I'm okay now, is sort of the usual introduction I do to public sector folk. I, I'm very much a private sector um, refugee, um, spent 10 years at, at a, a, a massive uh, consumer goods company, which I won't name, um, and, uh, and, but as we said, uh, spent a year in, in GDS just recently uh, and very much enjoyed it. Um, but let's, let's start with a story. So eight years ago, I took over as tech lead of this awful financial product, which was in the biggest SAP installation of the world. And we can all cringe and be horrified about it. But you know, reality is, a lot of the time, we are dealing with legacy systems. And at the time, it was just so fundamentally broken that um, it could only be changed once every three months. Every time they changed it, they caused more issues. And uh, at the time that I took it over, there were about 100 tickets open, which for anybody who's done ITIL or been a problem change incident manager, that's a, that's a pretty horrific uh, situation to be in. Um, and as I say, kept causing more and more problems. And so I kind of felt a bit, a bit like I'd been... I'd, I'd been, I'd been sold a lemon. Um, the, this, this wasn't really where I expected my career to be going. Um, and I, I went and asked what the ops team thought of, of the dev team. And they basically thought that the devs were a bunch of cowboys who were you know, maliciously trying to destroy their beautiful um, high uptime system. Um, and I, I asked dev what they thought of ops. And, they thought that they were basically just like the worst nightclub bouncers in the world, and it, 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 they just didn't like them because they were wearing trainers, and, and that was what the problem was. And um, they, were, they were both a little bit right, um, but they were also a lot wrong. And I think what surprised me at the time was that I think I was the first person who'd ever asked both sides. Um, and that's actually really common, I think, even today, that you've got these silos, that you've got your operations folks, your sysadmins, completely separated from, from, your, from your development side of things. Um, so at the time, quite a while ago, we, we kind of, on the dev side, we upped our game. We, we started having proper testing, test-driven development. Um, on the ops side, we, we learned to trust a bit better. We, after the first time we put something live and didn't destroy the world, we, uh, we got them to agree that we could at least things, put things out monthly. That's 12 times a year, not just four times a year. And I suppose the bigger thing was just talking a bit more, which I think we all know that when we, uh, we try and solve technical problems, usually they're people problems. Um, and we felt like superheroes because we managed to clear that backlog of 100 tickets in um, four releases. Um, we managed to uh, get the, the product that we were working on to, to be successful to the point that we moved uh, a further $90 million um, dollars worth of, of business over onto it with some uh, significant advantages for the company. And all we'd really done was sort of start talking to each other a little bit better, so it didn't feel like rocket science. And since then, this DevOps area has become, become quite a hot topic, but I think there's quite a lot of um, misconceptions around it and, and myths, and that's why uh, when Andy asked me to, to come and speak, I, I thought this might be a, a good thing to talk about. So just to make sure we're all in the same place, some quick definitions, probably not the most scientific, but when I talk about development, I mean building whatever the product is. When I talk about ops, it's running that thing. So your developers, your sysadmins. And DevOps really is a philosophy of communication and collaboration between those two specialties. It, it isn't saying that you don't need one or the other, or that you can make them the same thing, because my god, I was a developer, and you did not want me running your production servers. Um, and I th so I think that's really important. It's not about making them the same thing. It's about uh, kind of just improving the collaboration and the communication between them. Um, so first of all, let's look at some stuff that I can tell you right now won't work um, if you look at doing this in your organizations. And this is a, a, a credit where it's due, a, a really brilliant list from um, a site called DevOps Guys. Um, and th they've got some really good articles about, uh, about DevOps and what it means for the industry and, and where things are going. So it's worth looking at. Um, so traps to avoid. Don't, don't feel like this is something you can put in a flow chart and inflict on people. That, that won't work. Um, Agile and DevOps aren't the same thing. They work really well together. So if you get your Agile development uh, processes and project management going, then um, the DevOps philosophy and way of working um, can be a really wonderful complement to that. But don't, don't confuse the, the two things. Um, Rebranding a team, either a dev team or an ops team, and just calling them a different name, 
isn't going to work. And starting a separate DevOps group isn't going to work either, because really what this is about is a philosophy of reducing silos rather than, um, than creating new ones. And I think the last one's the thing I, I see the most often, which is um, ops teams going, well, it's all about ops, so we'll, we'll own this now. And dev teams trying to do the same thing. And that's probably, many of you are leaders in your organizations, that's probably the one I'd say, watch out the most for. Don't, don't let this become a power struggle. It needs to, needs to be about finding a new way of working together. Um, believing it's a buzzword is another th thing that really doesn't work, or it's, that it's a silver bullet. It's really not going to solve all your problems. Um, as I said earlier, it's really not about devs managing production or dev-driven release management. But I do think that everybody can make this happen. It doesn't, it, you don't need special people. Um, you don't need uh, special time to do it in. You don't have to wait for a crisis, and probably waiting for a crisis is the, the worst thing to do. Um, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of times when you, when you talk to organizations about why a best practice would be good for them, and their immediate answer is just, but we're different. We, we can't do it that way. That was a bit depressing. So let me talk about what does work. Um, this is a framework that John Willis has put out, um, which I, I, think, I think works very well. And anybody who has read the, the GDS um, uh, service design manual, this is, this is a framework you'll see there as well, which is to start with culture, um, and, but also look at automation, measurement, and sharing. And so what do we mean by culture? It's all about people and reducing that us and them mentality. Devs broke production, and it's their fault. Um, but focusing on fast and stable. And that's really the, the most important thing about DevOps as a, as a philosophy, is it's a way of smoothing the road so that your business that needs faster and faster change, which we've all, all the other speakers have spoken about a lot today, um, you want to be able to do things more frequently, um, add new functionality, uh, respond to the, to, the, to the users, to your citizens, your internal folks. Um, but you also have a, a, a public out there that expects things to be up, not just 99.9, .9, but 99 point multiple nine percent of the time. Um, and so this is a way of getting to, to be agile and, and fast in your change, but also stable in the service that you provide. Um, Invest in automating everything that you can. There's very few sysadmins I know who really want to sit every day and um, stroke tin, uh, as, as we were talking about earlier, or their job be about monitoring alerts or seeing what's broken and then fixing it. Um, in giving, your, um, giving time to invest in making, working on the system to m reduce time working in the system um, is really, really valuable. Um, and you look at some of the the you know, most interesting to me startups these days, they can spin up new servers, services, um, and so, so much in clicks of a button or even automatically. And that's something which, you know, with my big systems, um, outsourced uh, private sector background is just a dream. When I, I, I couldn't believe how, um, how well that was being done when I, when I joined GDS. And you literally saw a board up on the, on the wall that ran all the tests for every part of GovUK in under three minutes. And any change that was deployed, they could see whether it had broken anything in three minutes. And you know, being from a from a world where a full a full range of testing in a project took three weeks, um, I was extremely impressed with that. Um, the other thing is to measure things. I mean, we we all talk about you get what you measure, but it's even more true when you look at uh, at operations. Um, knowing what you what you break when you break it, um, being able to respond well to uh, things like anonymous targeting you, um, uh, DDoS attacks and similar. Um, but again, it's an investment to, to be able to put some of that measurement, the analytics and, and so on in place so that you can then focus on improving the things that are, that, that are needed. And the last is sharing. This is a terribly saccharine Haley Joel Osmond movie. But um, the cultures that we're seeing that are, that are really adopting DevOps as a philosophy very well um, tend to be 
really good at sharing back, not just inside their own companies, but with the, with the broader community. Um, there's a series of uh, meetups called DevOps Days that started in Belgium and have now spread around. Um, and so if the people in your organization who are looking after your development and your operations aren't hooked into that kind of community and seeing what's going on there, then um, it's possibly worth investing in getting them uh, some access to, to some of the thinking that's going on here. As I said earlier, um, GDS is pretty impressive in this regard, that that philosophy of de developers and, and operations folks working closely together, um, the approach of continuous delivery, having plenty of monitoring and automation. Um, my good friend uh, Gareth Rushgrove uh, has, a, has a series of t-shirts all about how much he loves graphs, um, and more and more people buying them for him as pranks now I mean that I thought this uh, from James Thornett, who's the product manager for GovUK, that in six, the first six months of GovUK, there were over a th there were a thousand releases, and that's the sort of thing that is almost incomprehensible if you're um, used to that more traditional way of of doing operations and and uh, doing development. The the fact that a thousand um, code changes had been released in in that six month period is pretty impressive. My other favorite thing about GDS is they have a a GDS badger of deployment that tweets when they uh, when they uh, do releases, um, which I think so tells you a little bit about the DevOps culture at GDS as well. Um, in terms of a bit further reading about this, um, the I, I've posted all of these on my blog as well. So uh, there's a load of different posts about uh, anti patterns and patterns. A guy called Nick um, Bartolomeos has written a really, uh, really amazing presentation about how you introduce this culture in in a very traditional legacy bound environment. Um, and so probably that that's the one area that I didn't feel I had time to talk through in detail today. Um, but I'd highly recommend that presentation to those of you who are finding yourself with loads of existing transactional systems, whether you own them or you're uh, working with, uh, with organizations on them, that need to be kind of brought into the 21st century in terms of the way that uh, development and operations is done. Um, as mentioned by a few people, that the GDS's digital service manual is excellent, um, and there's uh, certainly a, um, a good page there about, about how to approach this as well. Um, and there's a, there's a weekly newsletter, which I'd also recommend that, that you have a look at. Um, given the time, it was really just a bit of a taster of what this is and hopefully some food for thought in terms of how it might be useful for you guys. But hopefully it was good. Thank you very much.